Hello, welcome to my demonstration. Today I'm showing you my stained glass crystal fish projects. First of all, I drew out two drawings of what my fish are going to look like. I put these on a box and used 14 and 18 gauge wires and bent and twisted them into shapes roughly going over my drawings. I pinned them down with push pins and here I'm using a gel flux and tacking them with solder wherever they, the wires meet each other so that I end up with a, a wired fish. Up there on the top is a pile of extra solder from various other projects. I'm using a plastic probe that I use in lots of my projects to hold the wire down when I need to. That yellow thing in the corner is my ventilation system. So I use my plastic probe to, to move and and hold down my wires when needed. Most of this video is going to be shown at four times speed, so it's not like an hour and a half long. I wanted to have it kind of bearable. It gets kind of boring. So once and now and then I have to use needle nose pliers and rebend the the wire. And as you see, I changed my mind at times and didn't follow my drawing completely. That's okay. I like my projects to kind of evolve as I go. So my drawing was more an example or uh, a start of where I wanted my project to be. And as I twisted the wires and laid them down, I did make little adjustments here and there, and that's fine. I like to use the gel flux because it doesn't run all over the place and it doesn't seem to be quite as smoky as creates so much smoke as some of the liquid fluxes I've used. So the push pins were t mainly to hold the wires down as I was bending them around. But when I'm actually soldering, you know, they kind of get in the way. Yeah, I'm using the actual solder sometimes to move projects around. Yeah, this piece kind of kept on flipping all over the place. And if there's little areas where the two wires don't actually touch, 
that's okay. You can always use solder to hold them together still. Yeah, it's probably stronger if they always actually touch, but you can get away with a lot. That wire in the middle of the fish right there, I do end up removing later on because I decide I don't want it. But right now at this point, I thought I wanted it. Yeah, I had to hold that down a little bit right there a minute ago um, until it cooled because it kept on wanting to bend up. I mean, they are wires, so you have to kind of try to get them to lay flat. Now the wire is basically complete. I wanted to fix that little, those little fins. So this is my basic wired armature that I started off with for one of the fish. Now, because I'm getting tired of soldering just on a piece of cardboard or paper because it gets so gooey and messy, I decided I would try to use a sheet of glass this time and just an extra sheet of glass that I had and that I knew that the solder wouldn't stick to that. So right now that was my thought that I would just put a sheet of clear glass over white paper and that way I would have a nice surface to work on. I am using these glass circle cabochons that are between four millimeters and 10 or 12 millimeters diameter that I have foiled. And I'm using them and sticking them in between my areas of my fish to create my little fin crystals. These um, clear cabochons are really nice because they're flat on one side and then they're domed on the other. So they're really easy to, to lay on your glass or paper when you want to um, include them in your soldering project because they lie nice and, nice and flat. If you want to see how I foil them, I do have other videos showing how I added foil to them. Yes, you have to take the foil and cut it down so you're only using like a quarter or a sixth of the width of your normal 7 30 seconds inch foil in order to get a thin enough stripe of foil to wrap them in. And of course, because you're not using very much foil, they are not being held on terribly well. Um, so they do, it is a fragile project, but it does get the effect I want. So yeah, sometimes I have to like press those little wires down so they're nice and flat. And the areas that I don't have a little cabochon to fill, I am filling with solder. So this does leave quite a lot of um, solder areas in the project, but that's the look that I'm after for this fish. I'm going to end up probably painting them or covering them with a black patina as I will show you in the finished project 
product, but um, at this point I didn't really know if I was going to leave them silver or make them black or whatever. So all the fins I decided were going to be clear. So that's what I'm doing first is I am filling all the fin areas. Now this is also because the cabochons lie very nice and flat and so they're very easy to do. When we get to the crystals they are not flat or some of them are flatter than others. So they're going to be more challenging to include. I'm going to have to raise the fish up in areas and that's just going to take a lot more um, more maneuvering and since the cabochons are all flat if I do them first then I don't have to worry about trying to do them afterwards. Yeah right now I'm using um, some adjustable pliers because they're heavy to hold down the fin. So I'm just adding some more details. I have a whole bucket there, cup there as you can see, of already foiled cabochons waiting to go in. I like to have a nice supply of different sizes so I'm not hampered by not having what I want. Yeah, that little scrap, that was a little scrap of solder. Don't want to waste any. Now, when I did the wire for the tail, I purposely put lots of stripes in it, hoping that I'd be able to fill the little tail with runs of cabochons. So there's me trying to hold the, the wire nice and flat again. And feel free to skip ahead if you want to, to see what I ended up creating. At times I had to adjust the width between the sections of the tail so that I could actually get the stones I wanted in those, in the channel. I decided I wanted them to go right down the middle of that channel. So that's why that's that last one at the bottom of the screen needed to be moved over just a tad. There he goes. Now, when it comes to those little curly cues that I twisted the wire um, at the end of each fin, I didn't want to put so much solder on them that they would lose their texture of the of the twisty. Because yeah, if you add a lot of solder, you'll just have a, a fat coil there and you won't have those little twisty marks.
I did try to add a little extra solder at the middle of each of the little um, coily things at the end to be like a little blob. See, it's nice to have a real good variety of sizes when you're doing something like this so that you can choose what works. I would not recommend trying to foil anything under like four or six milliliters in diameter because it really gets almost impossible to, to get to get them foiled nicely. For the actual crystals, I don't go smaller than 10 millimeters. But for these um, cabochons, I have used um, four and six millimeter. And I wanted the little stones to be between the wires, not sitting on top. So if they didn't fit between and there was nothing small enough, then I filled that area with solder. If your piece of solder is getting so short that you can't hold it without burning your fingers, then use tweezers or needle noses, pliers to hold the piece of solder. And there I just dropped the hunk of solder on top of my project, knowing that it was a fine size and I would just kind of absorb all of that little piece. Yeah, so right there, either that channel is going to be too thin to get any crystals in there or I'm going to have to widen it somehow with my, oh, there we go. So I should be able to get one there. So when you're designing something, you have to keep in mind what size stones or, or glass or whatever you're going to use, um, it's going to go in there. Because if I had made those stripes and the fins any closer together, there's no way I have anything to put in there. So what I'm doing with my left hand there is I'm using my bent needle noses to hold down the product as at the fin as I'm um, soldering, which is why I gave myself small pieces of solder to use because I don't have three hands. So I wanted to be able to grab a piece of solder right there.
right now I'm laying a, a layer I'm basically like tinning all the rest of the of the wires so they're ready for the next part of the project and it came apart right there at the nose of the poor fishy so I'm adding solder to fill that gap there you go Uh, now I'm in the process of adding crystals to this particular fish. I'm still doing it on a piece of glass that's on a piece of white paper. The lighting is better in this section. I have foiled a variety of sizes and colors of crystals. And I have other videos that show... Um, how to foil crystals, how to remove the backing. Lots of crystals come with a, um, a painted mirrored backing, and I show how to remove that. I'm using various metal washers and pieces of glass on this fish to hold it the right height to be able to have it the right height to, for the... Um, just out of them and that little guy came out that um that cabochon so i am replacing him with a new one that as i said these are not very strongly attached since i'm just wrapping the foil around the edges of these glass cabochons so they do come out easily sometimes oh there's another one that that one also fell out. So right now I'm replacing that that one. I'm taking off the oil, old foil that was still attached. And I'm going to solder in the replacement one. So yeah, this happens. It's not it's it's not great that it happens, but it happens. Sometimes they just fall out. I, use, I take the old ones and I just put them in a jar. And then when I get around to it, I clean them all off and refoil them. I'd rather them fall out now than when I'm done with the project. For this fish, I used a hunk of solder for the eye. Now, I've decided that soldering on the glass was not overly successful because the glass kept cracking, so I bought an actual silicon mat to solder on. And I also learned that using metal washers isn't the best idea because the solder will stick to them at times. So I bought myself some silicone washers. And these are actually work out great. I can balance the, the cone-shaped crystals on to the middle of the washers of various sizes. And that keeps them at a nice level playing field for soldering. So right now I'm using different size crystals of various colors that I've already foiled and different washers and just trying to figure out how I can best place them. Now I did remove that center wire that I had in the middle of the fish also because it was just too difficult to get the crystals to work. Um, they, they just wasn't enough room. I, I wanted originally to have a, a line of crystals along the middle of the, of the body of the fish, but it, it just didn't work. So it's hard enough to, to fit crystals in 
the way I'm doing it. Obviously, the, the bigger your project, you know, you, the more variety of um, choices you have. But these little areas, um, there's not that much of a choice to get stones in. And I wanted them to vary. So I didn't want to like have two dark blues together. Um, I wanted to make sure that the colors were, were all spread out. So I kept changing my mind. I'm using those those larger silicon washers to just kind of keep the whole fish raised a little bit. These crystals are pointy on both sides, most of them, especially the bigger ones. So I really didn't have a choice um, what what way up they went. The the smaller crystals that I have, like that one right there, some of them are flat on one side and pointy on the other. So those. If I was just using those, I could have um, not had the fish raised quite so much. But I wanted the solder line, where, where the foil is and where the wire armature is, to line up nicely so it would be attached as well as possible. When placing the flux on these, I had to kind of like drop them on top because they moved so easily that I didn't want them to move. Same with the solder. I had to kind of like drop the solder in place and not touch the, um, the actual crystal very much. The wire was pretty sturdy. But most of the crystals, if you, if you touch them, they start tilting. So I had to kind of get them to stay in place before I soldered all the way around them. So I just kind of drop the solder um, and then kind of tack them in place and then go around them. At one point, I was thinking of just not filling in the gaps between the crystals and just leaving it open. Um, I eventually decided to fill it all in with solder. I don't know if that was the best choice. So you have a choice. I mean, you don't, you don't have to fill in all the gaps. I think since most of it was filled in by the time I was done adding the crystals, I just thought I should fill in the rest of it. So here I'm adding more solder to just fill the little gaps.
I did end up using some glass globs and other pieces of, of glass that I had foiled um, to fill those very small gaps because my crystals just weren't small enough. So like that was just a little amber glass glob. The back of, of your project will of course need to be soldered as much as possible because remember you need as much support as possible. Yeah, some of the um, silicone wash is stuck a little bit. So I went around and soldered, back soldered everything. And, and as you're soldering, you'll get some globs that'll come through of solder and you'll have to knock those down. So you're going to have to turn it over and then solder the other side some, turn it over again, solder the other side. So this is one of the fishes when it's done before it's the black patina is added. And the two different fish were done a little bit differently as far as, um, see the eyes are a little different. One has a glass eye and the other one has basically a, a solder blob for an eye. But these are the two fish when they were done and coated in black patina. Thank you for watching.